elves took marriage to another level. It wasn't just about the bonding of the physical bodies. It was also the bonding of the spirits, an actual, literal, and figurative soul bonding. So these were soulmates. The idea that Galadriel would somehow forget that she had a husband, never mention him to anybody, have flirtatious encounters with Halbrand, all of this is so much invented and against the established lore of Tolkien. I keep coming back to how did the Tolkien estate sign off in this? And again, that's a discussion for another video, which we've already done, and we'll have another one coming up. But anyway... I'm Renfell, the Bearded Dwarven Princess, back for another rant in the Rings of Power series, and today it's all about elven marriage and the sanctity of the marriage vows, and the fact that they bond forever. There is no way that an elf would forget that they had a spouse, nor would their sibling take priority when it comes to vengeance or seeking out to find out what happened to them. So we're going to be diving into all that today. If you are new here, like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon so that you never miss an update as we continue to discuss things, not just here in the Rings of Power series, but also in Mondays in Middle-Earth, which happens every Monday at 11 a.m. Central as I continue to read through The Hobbit, The Lord of the Rings, and The Silmarillion for the first time in 20 years. We just finished up The Two Towers as of this recording, and we're getting into The Return of the King, which will probably take the rest of 2022, and then we're getting into The Silmarillion, where we're going to be discussing stuff like this in greater detail, which means... For those of you who are here who know more than I do, sound off in the comments below because I don't know where all this information comes from. Some of it I'm familiar with, some of it I'm not familiar with because I've never read like the extended histories of Middle Earth and all that stuff. And I rely on all of you amazing people to help educate me on things as I continue to expand upon my knowledge of all things Middle Earth. Support the channel. I am a content creation service, and just as much as you support Netflix and Hulu, you should be doing the same here because my content. Well, I know some of you watch it for free, but hey, throw me a bone from time to time, you know? Support a fellow content creator if you could. You can throw two bucks, five bucks, ten bucks, whatever you want at the channel in form of a super chat. Anytime we're on a premiere like this, I'm down there chatting away, hanging out with you live every morning at 6 a.m. And after the fact, you can do super thanks on the upload. We also have three tiers of memberships. You can choose one, pick your poison. We do a lot of cool stuff for our members, including... Lots of cool stuff like the Lotro Chicken Coop build and the Battlestar Galactica reimagined rewatch that we're doing. Without further ado, though, let's get back to the topic at hand. It says here on TolkienGateway.net, Elves marry for love, or at least with free will, from both parties, typically early in their life. Monogamy is practiced and adultery is unthinkable. We'll come back to that in a minute. Unthinkable. By their very nature, they are seldom swayed by the desires of the body or influenced by lust. Well, now we're going to come back to that. So, what do they mean by swayed seldomly by the desires of the body? Well, because when an elf bonds with another elf, they are bonding at the spiritual level. So, their satisfaction with their partner is not based purely upon the physical component. It's also based upon that mental connection, that spiritual connection that they have. The physical component is there, but it's minute in comparison. So the idea that she would, that Galadriel would somehow be lustful or even consider any sort of advances by Halbrand, regardless of whether she knew he was Sauron or not, you know, leading up to that, there was those flirtatious moments that would never, ever have happened. Galadriel would never ever, according to established lore, have even considered the possibility that Halbrand could be someone for her because she was already fucking married. Established fact. Also, the sanctity of marriage is such in Tolkien's world that the bond of a couple being spiritual in nature means that it's way more powerful than familiar bonds. So the idea that she would be pissed off and need to seek vengeance for her brother, who, by the way, is still alive back in Valinor, if you go by the lore of the books where elves, spirits are going to the halls of Mandos and can be reborn, all that good stuff, um, 
ignoring all that for the moment, let's just focus on the fact that she somehow, when she's talking in episode, I think it was seven, what's that kid's name that she was with when they're in the forest? He asks her the question, you know, uh, have you ever lost anyone that you loved? Was it Theon? Theo? I think it was Theo. I can't remember the name of the kids because they're so unimportant. Um, The question is asked, have you ever lost anyone you loved? And she says, yes, my brother and my husband. Now, again, they didn't specifically say that that um, Celeborn had been killed, but she at least references the fact that she has a husband. But here's the thing. If she suspected that he just went off to war and never came back, she would not have just sat there and assumed he was dead. She would have gone on the warpath just as she did for her brother, only she would have done it in a far more focused manner because it was her husband. And the sanctity of that spiritual connection is such that she would not have just given up. Look at as an example the um the sons of Elrond after their mother had been captured and what happened to her and tortured like that became their lifelong pursuit and it's something that i think a lot of these writers on this show not just a lot of these all the writers on the show and the troners particularly seem to have thrown all of this out and not even taken any of this into consideration which makes me wonder there is a there is a part of me that's been asking this question for the past few weeks have these guys actually ever read anything beyond the lord of the rings books are they basing everything they know off of based on like Peter Jackson's films and maybe a synopsis of the the, the the Lord of the Rings trilogy? Because it seems to me like they don't they don't even have a basic grasp of this sort of information. Anyway, uh, it was ruled by Manwe. Since the elves are by nature permanent in life within Arda, so also is their unmarred marriage. So they only marry one time, and it says there was only one exception, and that was Finway, the king of the Noldor. After his first wife died from passing the majority of her life into Feanor and refusing to then be re-embodied, he was thus permitted to marry again. This was pronounced Namo as the statute of Finway and Miriel. It says spouses may choose each other in their youth and be betrothed long before they are married. The betrothal is subject to parental approval from both houses unless the parties are of age and intend to marry soon at which point the betrothal is announced at the meeting of the two houses during which they exchange rings um the betrothal lasts at least a year a betrothal a betrothal is revocable by a public return of the rings which will then be molten but revocation was rarely needed because the eldar do not err lightly in the choice of their partner hmm so they don't make mistakes when it comes to choosing their life partner because this is something forever, ever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever forever and ever and ever and ever and forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever and beyond. It says here that spouses can sometimes live separately for extended period of time. However, it says here, though united in body and spirit, they remain individual with different gifts of mind and body to pursue. However, a sundering during pregnancy or during the early years of parenthood, such as my word, would be so grievous to the couple and hurtful to the child that they would prefer to have children in peaceful times. Very, very, very interesting. Ah, This is one of those things where I got to come back to it again and say, at what point in the show... Does Galadriel display any of these described attributes that elves supposedly have for their partner? The idea that she would go to war and be on this quest of vengeance for a brother whose body she has seen, whose spirit she knows is going to be reborn, versus a husband who disappeared in battle and has yet to be seen since then... Why would she have a lust for vengeance and a quest to find Sauron for the former, but not for the latter? It makes no freaking sense. If she really was the Tempest, right? That Tempest would have been unleashed trying to find her soulmate, going after and finding where did Celeborn, did he fall? Is he trapped? Is he a prisoner of war? What happened to him? 
she would not have sat around and waited and said to a small human child in the woods, Well, I once had a husband, and I smile at the memory of here bumblingly putting on his armor. Are you kidding? Hang on a second. Hang on a second. Hang on a second. Hang on a second. Can we just go straight to Celeborn? Bumbling idiot? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Celeborn was a Sindarin prince. Dun, 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 dun. I remember he fought a whole bunch of battles, and I gotta remember when they were. Uh, 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 uh. Ooh. They fought at the sack of Eregion. Uh, 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 um. Took up the rule of Lothlorien. Um. He fought a few more times sometime in here as well. And make towards the dwarves. There's a whole bunch of history here. I'm not going to read through it today because it's a different topic for another time. But the idea that Celeborn was a bumbling idiot who didn't know how to use his armor is contradictory to the lore. Because he was, in fact, a, a, a leader with military prowess. And if you read The Lord of the Rings, he is the actual de facto ruler of um, Lothlorien. Um, co-ruler alongside with Galadriel, but when they arrive in the Fellowship of the Ring, it is Celeborn who does all of the talking. Galadriel has her chapter with the mirror, but when it comes to the actual greetings, welcome Fellowship from Rivendell, where is Gandalf, for I have need of his counsel, and this whole conversation, what are you doing here, where is Gandalf, etc., 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 it is Celeborn who does all those that talking because he is in fact the front man, the face man for Lothlorien. And a lot of people say, oh, you're trying to cast shade on Galadriel and say that she wasn't a co-leader. No, I'm not. But I'm saying he, she deferred to him when it came to the leadership of the conversations in any case. And she was definitely a co-leader in terms of strategies and power and, and everything else. But he was a front-facing dude. And this idea that she would just abandon him to a fate unknown is absolute malarkey. Thoughts below, as always. Like, subscribe, hit the bell icon. Support in all the ways we talked about at the beginning of the episode. I will see everybody next time. In the meantime, let's have a conversation and see what we can find out about. I'd love to know more. If you know more about elven marriage and the sanctity of that bond, discuss.